The problem with digital photography is that it is too easy to take a photograph. In many cases, they are snaps and not photographs. Nothing wrong with snaps if that is the intention, but please don't judge them as photographs. This shot of Pevensey Castle is a snap because the sky is overexposed. So why? The castle walls required more exposure because they were not sunlit. The camera metering has exposed for the walls, but because of the wide dynamic range of the composition, the sky is rendered overexposed. However, as I saved to RAW, I was able to make a number of corrections in Adobe Lightroom. Let us look in more detail at what I have done. First, I took highlights and whites right down. Also, the exposure a bit. Increased shadows and blacks. Added clarity and vibrance and then found it necessary to increase exposure back a bit. The result is saved to JPEG and the RAW adjustments kept. I have done something similar with this shot, restoring the sky whilst manually making the digital adjustments that are executed automatically in camera when saving to a JPEG, but now with more control. Images having a high dynamic range are a challenge for any metering system, such as this shot where the view at the end of the path is much brighter. Saving to RAW, you have more flexibility for making corrections, but saving to JPEG, the camera digitally processes the image and in the process, it may not solve the problem of high contrast. How you meter can have an important effect on the final result. For this shot, I used ESP. Normally, I use Spot. I make adjustments in post-production and not in camera. With Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop, you can backtrack because adjustments are saved on a separate sidecar file without overwriting the original. Delete it and you return to the image as taken in camera. You could make these important decisions when taking the photograph, but a true artistic vision never stands still. So whatever technique used, you don't want to lock yourself into something that cannot be undone. With this shot, you have the worst of both worlds, an underexposed church and an overexposed sky, and spot metering didn't help, but it could still be corrected in Lightroom, and that is what I have done. And if you think the outcome is a little overcooked, well, we can change all of that. A white subject against a very dark, overpowering background is easily overexposed, especially if the metering is on Matrix or ESP. It sees too much background, so the wild garlic is overexposed. And incidentally, a waterfall in a deep gully has a similar problem. Nevertheless, by saving to RAW, Lightroom can still make a correction. I tried lightening the background, but it didn't work. But that doesn't matter, because it is easy to backtrack. One of the most difficult subjects to correct is the classic view down the nave of a church with a much brighter window at the far end. This is the un altered shot out of camera, saved to RAW, and even spot metering on its own hasn't solved the problem of controlling an excessive dynamic range. However, I metered about midway between highlights and shadows. 
Here is a step-by-step -step guide how I adjusted the image in Adobe Lightroom. I am aware of HDR, but with Lightroom, I have more control. Highlights taken down to restore window. Increase shadows and blacks to lighten interior. Increase exposure slightly. Take whites down and highlights a bit further. Increase clarity and vibrance. Increase exposure again. Change white balance. Remember, all of this can be altered six months later if you change your mind, provided you keep the original RAW file and its sidecar. There is no logic with each correction, the arbiter being your eyes. I increased the exposure slightly at stage 3, but decided it required a further increase at stage 6 after I had played with whites, highlights, clarity and vibrance. You will not get this information out of a rule book, and neither here, because every photograph is different. I can only offer general guidance by example. Finally. I only process those images for which I have a use. That might be for YouTube, a lecture, or publishing, but each requires a different approach in post-production. I catalogue each image with the name of the place and delete the camera number. They are archived onto a separate hard disk and then backed up to the cloud.